Welcome to my very first tutorial. My name is Jonathan Jelkin. Uh, Adam asked me to make this. I'm going to go over how to work with H.264 footage. Uh, a lot of cameras these days, like the Canon 5D or 7D or flip cameras and just a lot of new video cameras are shooting to this format. It's a great format if you're going to upload straight to YouTube or something, but if you want to edit it, it doesn't work the best. Uh, it has a very math heavy frame cadence that requires your computer to do a lot of work. So we're going to try and transcode that to something that would be easier to work with. And we're also going to talk about if you can shoot slow motion like you can on a 70, how you can conform your footage to actually play back in slow motion. And I'm also going to show you how to set up a quick little easy setup in Final Cut Pro. You have one button to click and you'll be all set up to edit the new transcoded footage we make. So let's get started here. Got a bunch of footage here, this little Adam Colton clip. That's uh, straight out of the camera, H.264, and H.264 is a great codec to go online or something, but it's not really the uh, best codec when you want to edit something. Uh, it involves a lot of math, so it's hard for your computer to process. So we want to transcode that to something that's going to be easier to edit and just make the experience a little easier. So you can see here, this is all footage out of my Canon 70. And to start off, you want to go online. And there's a free program you want to download. It's at squared5.com and it's called MPEG Stream Clip. And they make a version for Mac and Windows and it's a great free little video transcoder. Um, so you go ahead and download that and get it installed and then you pull it up and MPEG Stream Clips coming up here. So this is MPEG Stream Clip. So for this one, what we want to do is process all of our footage at once. So we go up to List and Batch List. And then you take that and you click Add Files and you navigate to wherever your footage is. So here's all mine. Let's select all that. Hit to batch. And then you have this export to QuickTime. Leave those two unchecked. Click OK. Now we got to tell our footage where we want the new transcoded versions to go. So we're going to make a new folder and I always call mine AIC. We're going to transcode it to something called Apple Intermediate Codec. So that's AIC. So you call it whatever you want to, but there you go. Alright, and this is our compression settings. So we choose our compressor right here, and we go up to Apple Intermediate Codec. Boom. And then we raise our quality all the way up. That's not really going to affect your file size, but it's going to have a better output. Um, we're going to leave all of our footage unscaled, so it won't change the size at all. And then we're going to deselect interlay scaling, because this is progressive, so we don't need that. Click to batch. All of our footage is ready to go, and then you hit go and it'll go down the list and do all your stuff. Once all your footage is done spitting out here, you navigate to your folder. And uh, I just, I guess I could say this real quick too. So I do AIC codec. Um, a lot of people will tell you to do ProRes and ProRes is a little bit more robust codec, but for H.264, you really don't need it when you're going the other way. And ProRes files are just huge. Like you're just gonna have five, six times the file size and there's no extra information there it's just bloated content that you don't need so AIC is pretty close um, it looks great it works well your file sizes are manageable so that's why I do AIC so anyways um, now we've got all of our footage here and you can open it up here and see Apple Intermediate Codec so all this is now converted and we could take this into our editor Final Cut or Vegas or whatever you have and it'll edit and it'll be real simple and we won't have to render stuff and uh, it'll be a real happy experience, but there's a few more things. Um, some of this footage is slow motion. Uh, on a 70, you can shoot at 60 frames per second, and it actually is recorded at 60 frames per second, and it's played back at 60 frames per second. So it looks like normal speed video. It's just really crisp. So this shot right here, our favorite Adam Dillon shot, that is actually a slow motion shot. It's just coming through at... 60 frames per second. So, in order to make our footage actually play in slow motion, there's a couple things we need to do. Um, right now, we have all this footage and it's mixed in with slow motion and not slow motion. So, an easy way to do this is you open both of these. And the 7D, when it shoots slow motion, uh, the HVX, a lot of these cameras, when they shoot slow motion, 
they only shoot in 720p and when it shoots at 24 frames per second it shoots at 1080p so an easy way to tell what's slow motion and what's not is just to look at the frame size so right here you can see this is 1080p so we're going to color that one green this one's our slow motion 720p so we'll make that one blue and then you just go down the line and do that for all of your footage All right, fast hands, you know it. So now we've got all of our footage color coded. Now what we need to do is just double click on that file, go into it. We're gonna make two new folders. So we'll do one folder, we're gonna call it 24P, and we'll take all of our green 24P footage and put it in there. And we'll make another new folder, and we're gonna call that 60P. So this is all of our 60P slow motion footage. Put that in there. So now we've got them organized by file. Now, if you have Final Cut, then you probably have a program you've never opened called Cinema Tools. You open up that, and we don't need to do one of those. And come on up here to File and Batch Conform. And then we navigate to our folder where all of our footage is. Okay, so here's a 60p folder. So it's going to batch all of those. So you only have to select one, and it'll take all of them. Now, I was saying that 60p footage is played back at 60p. So all we're going to do is change the metadata to tell it to play it back at a slower speed. So our 24p footage is actually 2398. That's what we're going to edit in. It's 2398, which is 24 drop frame. So we'll click on that and then we'll conform it. And this is going to tell all of our 60p footage now to play back at 24. So we open it up. Here's our conform shots right here. This is anything that was a problem, it'll show up and skipped. Almost never anything that's a problem. We open this file up. Now when we watch this, should have slow motion. There we go. All right. So that's it for changing our footage. Our footage is now ready to go into Final Cut and be edited and do whatever we want with it. So, I'm going to show you a way to set up a little easy setting in Final Cut Pro. Um, this will just make it so you only have to hit one button and your sequence will be ready to edit any kind of this Apple Intermediate codec footage. So, get Final Cut Pro open here. Let's just arrange that by standard. Okay. And then go to Final Cut Audio Video Settings. And go to Sequence Presets at the top. And we're going to go right here, Apple Intermediate Codec 720p30. Hit Duplicate. And we're going to rename this one 7D AIC 24p. Okay. This is, you can just type whatever you want in the description. Boom. Okay. So then for our settings here. Now I normally edit in a 720p timeline. Now that shoots at 1080p for the 24, but anytime you have slow motion stuff in it, um, you're going to either be blowing it up to 1080 or you just want to scale all of your other stuff down to 720. YouTube, Vimeo, most of the online places are only going to accept 720p footage right now anyways. So there's uh, also another advantage if you have 1080p footage you can kind of reframe, or reframe it because you actually have more resolution so you can do 100% of your footage and then slide it around or whatever or you can just scale it down to fit in a 720p timeline so there's a resolution 720p pixel aspect ratio square field dominance none change our editing time base to 2398 and our compressor is going to be Apple Intermediate Codec again click OK now, I already had another one made there, but there you go. Now you can go to Sequence Settings, Load Sequence Preset. I'm going to pick one we just made. Click OK. All of our stuff will change, and then we'd be ready to go. And if you pull one of your new clips in, there's our 60p24 bomb. Put that in there. There's no rendering required. It'll just play right out of the timeline and be real easy to edit with. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial.